How's it going, guys? So we have an absolute nonsense question for rheumatology for step one and two, a nearly identical one, shows up on one of the new 2CK and BME forms, not my opinion. So before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 39-year-old man, he has a one-day history of severe pain and warmth and swelling of his right knee. Two days ago, he was in a kickboxing tournament. His temperature is 99 Fahrenheit, heart rate 85, blood pressure 115 over 70. Physical exam shows a right knee that is erythematous and warmed palpation. Arthrocentesis is performed, and the joint aspirate shows a leukocyte count of 17,000 per microliter with 90% neutrophils and calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Question wants to know the most appropriate next step of management. So I said this is an absolute nonsense question because if you remove this calcium pyrophosphate crystal descriptor from the vignette, this is classic textbook, septic arthritis, okay, which is exceedingly high yield on USMLA. Now, I will get into the calcium pyrophosphate crystals in a second, but you need to know that septic arthritis will present in four main patient groups on USMLA, all right? So the biggest risk factor is abnormal joint architecture. Now, the four patient groups under that umbrella statement, number one, prosthetic joint. You can't be more abnormal than having a prosthetic joint. Number two, RA slash OA patients. Number three, Otherwise, young, healthy patients who have uh, micro trauma slash trauma due to exercise in particular. Okay, so this guy was in a kickboxing tournament uh, a couple days ago. Uh, they might say, "Girl was in a kickboxing tournament." Uh, girl was in. Uh, a girl went to a soccer tournament. Uh, dude went hiking for eight hours a couple days ago. Okay, a uh, girl hit her knee against the dashboard in the car. Car accident. So that's the third patient group. Fourth patient group is going to be pediatrics, JRA. So this sounds like septic arthritis, okay? But they throw this calcium pyrophosphate uh, deposition disease in here, which is pseudogout. The two biggest risk factors for pseudogout, neither of which is mentioned here, uh, primary hyperparathyroidism, number one. Number two, hereditary hemochromatosis, all right? These are rhomboid-shaped, positively birefringent crystals. So we are going to treat this similarly to acute regular gout, okay, which is going to be NSAIDs, steroids, or colchicine. So our answer here is ibuprofen as per the NBME exam for 2CK. Indomethacin, by all means, yes, would be appropriate as an NSAID, all right, which will be the answer when they give NSAIDs for uh, gout. Uh, but for whatever reason, they decided for ibuprofen for this question. Acetaminophen is the wrong answer, okay? It's not what they want. It's a central acting COX inhibitor. It's not anti-inflammatory, so they actually want full-on NSAIDs, okay? NSAIDs, steroids, or colchicine for acute pseudogout. For chronic pseudogout, you treat the underlying condition, the primary hyperparathyroidism, their hereditary hemochromatosis. For regular gout that's chronic, of course, the xanthine oxidase inhibitor, allopurinol, or febuxostat, those would have no role in pseudogout. Um, and also probenicid, it's not going to show up on USMLE for regular gout. This uh, combination, very nitpicky, ceftriaxone and TMPSMX is for Whipple disease, which is, this is actually listed as a correct answer on that same NBME exam for 2CK, all right? They give Whipple disease as a PS, PAS positive macrophages in the lamina propria. What's the next best step in management? And the answer is literally just ceftriaxone and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, okay? Nafcillin is a classic treatment for septic arthritis. But in this case, of course, the answer is not septic arthritis because we have the calcium pyrophosphate crystals here. I should also note that despite the 90% neutrophil shift, if we check the literature, they will classically say that joint aspirate will show greater than 20,000 cells per microliter if it's septic arthritis. I haven't really seen the NBME get pedantic about the uh, joint aspirate leukocyte count, okay? Very rare, all right? Obviously, higher counts will reflect septic septic joint, uh, but in this case, nevertheless, as, as I prefaced with, you need to know the uh, abnormal joint architecture as I described. Uh, in this case, uh, this is me pseudo gout. You know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time, that's it.